Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Ursa Ryan and this is going to be a ridiculous game. You remember last series I said that we would be throwing Deity++ Plus Plus out with some style? Well, we are going to go out in a blaze of glory. Now devout followers of the channel will know that I've been playing on Deity++ Plus Plus for the last few series, which is a mode two more difficult than Deity. Basically, it gives the AI even more buffs to make them even more powerful, and we've been enjoying it. And combined with Real Strategy, a mod that basically overhauls and improves the AI to make it, well, a bit more competent, we've been finding that the games are a lot more competitive. Does it solve everything in Civ? No. Does it correct the AI entirely? No. But does it make it much, much better? Yes, it does. But what it has done is led to some huge games with crazy powerful AI that literally, it, it's like nation states. That's the best way I could describe it. Go and have a look at some previous series, like the Germany series. Oh, now that was a good one. What happened in that was the AI got so advanced that these huge nations were almost impossible to destroy. I had to summon 3,000 strength armies and then just grind against them. It was very, very realistic compared to sometimes in Civ where you can just roll people over and once you get the snowball going, that's it. Well, I was thinking, let's try and get a snowball going on Deity++. Byzantium, I have said consistently, are not only S tier, but I will put my neck on the line and say Byzantium are the best Civ in Civ 6. I won't hear any other arguments. They are the best. Why are they the best? Continue watching and I will show you why they're the best. But today we're going to be testing it out with a Deity++ Plus Plus standard speed map. We've got a standard sized map, an eight player map with 10 people. So we've smushed people in a little bit closer. We've got some city states. We have abundant start positions. Basically, if you want to play this, I leave the save file on Discord. Come and get it. You can literally copy and paste it into your computer. I even tell you which mods you need to be using to play it. It's way easier than trying to replicate it yourself. So come to Discord, plug, plug, plug. But what's going to happen is that we are going to go for either a religious or domination victory. Now, it's basically a domination victory. Sometimes with Byzantium, because of the ability of Taxis, which spreads your religion around when you get kills, you accidentally get religious victories before you get domination victories. It very much depends on the order in which you kill cities. But we are going to be going on a mighty rampage. No game modes active today. This is going to be pure chaos and to start with you can see if we have a quick look at the old settler lands this is a lake this is the sea this one is fresh this one is salty we don't like salty but we like fresh so we're going to settle next to the lake and because the cattle is on this tile and it's flat and is a perfect extra little food tile for my capital i have fresh water i've acted as a canal between the lake and the sea which is wonderful. I have a luxury here. I've got a luxury there. I've got luxury there. So there's a plus three luxury start, which is pretty good. Yeah, all in all, I like this start a lot. We are going to be working this 2-2 tile to start with. We've got extra 2-2 tiles. This one, the sheep, the deer, the banana is a 3-1. So that's all fantastic. And because we're playing as Byzantium, you pick astrology. What we're going to be doing is rushing a religion because we want Crusade. Crusade and Byzantium go together better than an Ursa Ryanus in a swimming pool full of crisps. If you've never seen me in a swimming pool full of crisps, it's noisy, it's crunchy, and it's delicious. Now, why are Byzantium so good? Well, it's all about religion. You get plus three combat strength if you have a religion. For every holy city you convert to your religion, you get another three combat strength. So that starts to build up. Three religions taken, plus nine. Six religions taken, plus 18. I had a series where I played a 50 player Byzantium game. Go have a look at it because Taxus, it went above 30 at one point. It was, it was silly. They get an extra great profit point and they get a burst of religion every time you kill an enemy unit or a city state unit. It's so powerful. Combining that with everyone's favorite impossible to pronounce ability. Hang on. Poprejogenotos. I think it's something like that, isn't it? Poprejogenotos. Oh, okay. I'm going to give it. That's my best go. Heavy and light cavalry units do full damage against walls as long as they are following your religion. We also get tagmas, which are like knights, but better because they give plus four combat strength to other people. And you get to summon a heavy cavalry unit for free every time you build the Hippodrome or any building within it. And in, it just to add to that as well, you get a plus 10 combat strength Droman, which is a quad marine with two strength. Like, honestly, they are... 
I can't describe how overpowered Byzantium are. They are just delightful. Like, they are so good. I'm going to go for the Slinger Star, I think. No, but a Scout Star, that will give us two pop. Then we can get a Settler out and then jump on Astrology whilst my warrior works its way round. Now already we found Yerevan right next to us, I believe. Yep, there we go, we found it first. That is plus one faith. That is possibly the best start for us ever because it means we can get a nice quick Pantheon going. Hopefully we can get Divine Spark, which is Byzantium's favorite um, thing. Oh, there's another city-state here. Are we the first to meet that? Yes, we're the first to meet that as well. Okay, good, 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 good. That's fine. Well, um, I guess we just sort of skip through a little bit and whatever. But we've got plus one faith and plus one culture per turn. The plus one culture per turn is really handy because it means we can get to Code of Laws nice and quick and get God King up and running. Now credit where it's due, this is the alternate cartography mod. I love this mod so much. Nunge, you are just a legend. Fantastic, well done. And today we're gonna be playing on one of the new maps. Which one was it again? It was one that's actually not in the description. Am I just missing it or, oh, this might be actually missing there. Hang on, it is a map called Step. I had to just look that up. Basically, it's a huge, flat plain map that you could imagine Mongolia or Saivia running around on. Lots of plains, lots of open space, lots of resources. Yeah, generally pretty good. There's Kabul. Blimey. Someone has met Kabul. Okay, right, we are not entirely alone then. Someone is close by, probably to the north or to the east, one of the two. And you can see Constantinople is working this three food tile. I'm not entirely sure that's what I want to be doing. I want to be probably working the deer tile. So before I get any techs and civics, when the cost of these things is basically the smallest, I'm just going to pick up bananas and then hopefully that'll just grow the city just a touch faster. There we go. Oh no, it'll actually get the settler out quicker as well. Perfect. That's great. Tribal heart, what's in there? An envoy. Okay. Cool. Just gonna hang on to that for a second. Byzantium and city-states don't tend to play very well. We we like to kill city-states, so <laughs> I think we're gonna just hold off for a second until we can figure out what's going on. Unless I want to get the Kabul bonus and get production in the capital. That would bring my production from 6 to 7. That's a big boost. Yeah, let's just do that quickly. There we go. Look at that. That shaves a turn off. Okay, um, I could have waited there until getting the double card, but I think that for that me is, is pretty good. Slap in a bit of the old God King. Yes, because I am a God. And discipline, because I am a God with rules. That's an important thing to know. Lahore. Okay. Oh, this one hasn't been met either. Now, Lahore is, is pretty decent. Niang units are a great use of faith, actually. So if I build an encampment, I can get some very powerful units there. But Kabul, units receive double experience from battles. Yerevan is of no use to me as Byzantium. And getting culture equal to construction costs, again, pretty useless to me. So I think I, Yerevan, and <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to mark them. I don't mind saying now. I'm going to probably take these city-states out. It's a very good way of spreading my early game religion. I will go from there. That was possibly the best misclick ever. I had a scout and I was like, oh, come over here to this tribal hut. Had the wrong unit and I just sort of panicked and it went upwards. And there's the Akil. That's really handy. Non-tile impossible natural wonder plus 50% production when producing wonders and districts and adjacent tiles. So I could build a holy site next to it to get the plus two and also to build it faster. So that's that's all quite exciting actually. Don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. A lot of tribal huts around me though, which is good. Often I have very low tribal hut starts. So this has been quite refreshing actually. There's astrology. I think that's a good holy site spot right on that hill there. So I'm going to pick up mining quickly so that we can work out exactly how to chop down these infernal woods. I found writing in a tribal hut, which is possibly the worst promotion out of all of them. I mean, that's the one you're guaranteed to get because you're going to meet somebody at some point. Now, normally what happens is I meet somebody the turn after getting the writing boost. That just seems to be how it works. Oh, I thought I was going to nab that for a second. Oh, they're no fun. I think in order to get nice and close to the city-states, I'm going to settle on top of that coca. And it also means I can get a second holy site next to here. So I've just got to make sure I build the holy site before I put the city down. So I'm just going to remind myself to do that. It's on the third tile. So if I build it and then settle, it should be fine. Look, as you can see, that's going to be plus three, plus four. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice little combo. Nice chunk of faith to help get my faith game going. All these tribal huts. There's so many of them. Irrigation boosted now. Again, I actually have a farm there. So that's a little frustrating. Buy the tile and quickly buy the tile. It's a huge chunk of gold. 
but I think I would quite like to do that. I'm just going to pop down two turns of Slinger first and then we'll go from there. Craftsmanship, I need to just get the warrior going, uh, sorry, builder going. Maybe I'd do that first. Let's get a couple of turns of builder and then as soon as mining finishes, we can get that. I was really, really hoping that we would get at least one builder from tribal huts, but so far, no dice. But nothing but things. There's the builder, oh, for goodness sake. As soon as I said it, I was like, I bet that will happen immediately and people will be massively suspicious of that. Um, okay, that scout is very, very annoying. I might have to just bring my scout back to come and kill it. All right, holy site time. Bam. Six turns to do that. Anyone building holy sites? Nope, no, so far, so far, so good. We don't really care about getting the first religion, being Thank brutally you, honest. Yeah. Oh, Indonesia. Hello, nice to meet you. We'll come to you in a second. Yeah, getting the first religion is not so important with Byzantium because the AI tends not to beeline crusade very much. And honestly, the rest of the religion doesn't really matter overly it's it's mainly it's mainly getting crusade what pantheons are available to us the settler one has gone unfortunately it's a little bit of a shame but my favorite is probably still here divine spark now why is byzantium really good with divine spark well you get an extra great person point which is very handy from having profits down um, so it gets you the religion nice and quickly. I'm thinking that's probably a good thing to do. The other one to do would be getting extra production early game from something, be it from marshes, if we had any. We don't really have any marshes per se. Lady of the Reeds and marshes is a wonderful thing. God of the Sea would be good. Bum, 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 bum. Look how many things I've got in this lake. Like, that's a lot of fishing boats. That's a lot of fishing boats. So we just go for God of the Sea and do that? That's tempting. Oh, I should mention I'm using extended religions mod. I just, I really like it. There's some fantastic options here. If you've played Civ as much as I have, having extra religion choices, just, it's really, really good. I love it. How much breathtaking tiles have we got? Really not many. Not many. I could go for the science from tiles for breathtaking appeal. That would be okay, I guess. But it's not the, it's not the biggest bonus for me. What do I do? What do I do? Do I get the religion quickly? Do I get, if I get a free builder, then that gives me 10% extra growth in all of my cities. That would be relatively useful for, like, long periods of time. Primordial waters, amenities from uh, coastal lake tiles where the holy sites are next to you. I mean, again, that's pretty cool. Ah, sorry, I'm sticking to my gut. Divine Spark. Getting the extra great profit point will just get that religion nice and quickly and it'll feed me extra faith the entirety of the game. Is it the biggest bonus? No, but it's a nice bonus early game when bonuses matter. Often an early game small bonus does a lot more for you. Oh, come on. Don't you... Oh, yeah, yeah then. Don't do that. I really need to get this subtle down before it dies. So Indonesia are right up here, actually. They're really, really close. So they could be target number one for me. They do have 26 culture per turn already, actually. Blimey, that is a lot. Some people have got the first campus down, but at the moment, so far, so good. Oh, I can't even build the holy site there because, uh, I can't build it there because of the annoying, the very, very annoying rice. Ugh, I need irrigation for that. Let's just sell the chocolate quickly. That's worth a lot of early game gold. That would be good. Maybe I can put it here and put a government plaza there instead. Is that the thing to do? That might be the thing to do. Might do that instead. All right, let's get the holy site there for now then. Perfect. It's a bit of a pain, but you know, it's okay. 24 turns. We're working a nice chocolate tile. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Hokia, not a useful one for me particularly either. Indonesia, why are you moving all your units over to me already? This is too early game. I don't, I don't respect these choices you're making here. It looks like they're, they're, they're sodding off, which is a good thing. Um, we'll see if that lasts. So I have my first holy site up. That will give me three points per turn. Do I want to rush for religion or do we start to sling a spam? Basically what I want to do is take out Yerevan or this city state down there as quickly as possible to get as much momentum as possible. One of the ways to do it is to make sure I've got all the horses I could need. Rush horsemen, which would be cool. Uh, and then just slam horsemen against it. But an archer spam works really well as well. So I think the slinger rush might be a good option for me here, but I will just pick up another builder quickly. I think three po uh, profit points per turn is going to be good enough for now, but we can always rush that if it looks like we're not going to get a religion. How many horses have we got? Five and actually two around me. Oh, perfect. That's, that's great. We did all right. Someone's there. Okay, that looks like, is that gray? Gray and black. That looks like Germany to me. 
Normally they're pretty distinct if you see them. Oh, they're actually, this might be Germany. There we go, look at this, Germany. I thought I'd spotted them somewhere. Dortmund, you're far enough away from me, friend, to not be an issue, but don't let that change. Manatore. Hello, nice to meet you. Oh, there's a, there's a very, very low military strength going on. Are you having a war? Oh yeah, Germany and Amanatore are actually killing each other already. I mean, it looks like one of you settled over towards the other here. I'm not pointing fingers, but normally Germany, you're the one that doesn't respect personal space. Here's my first boatload of horses as well. Craftsmanship boosted. And also, okay, we've gone to Agogi, we're on to God King. Sorry, um, oh, what am I talking about? Agogi and urban planning. Good, right, so we can spam those slingers out quickly and then go for the Yerevan kill basically as soon as we can pick up a religion. We're on course for getting Simon Peter first at the moment, but we will keep an eye on that. Also, this is one of those games where, like, oh, there's a tribal hut here. Um, feigning friendship with people is kind of pointless. Like, we are going to anger a lot of people very, very quickly, and it's just going to go downhill from there. Second shrine completed. Perfect. Again, Slinger Spam, please, thank you so much. We should get the first religion, although actually Stonehenge was taken from somebody, so Heretic Script was taken. Shrines and Temples giving extra science. It often gets taken on this modded religion game. We've got archers now researched. I'm going to beeline horseback riding as soon as we can because horses are definitely something that we want to get ASAP. ASAP. They are brilliant. But that means we've now got two archer upgrades. So I think unless I can, I mean, how am I? people buying horses for much? A little bit. I could sell my early game horses. Um, I'm just trying to think of, is that the best thing to do? Yes, it is because I can now upgrade every single one of my slingers in basically one go. So that actually works really well. Machinery boosted. Perfect. The crew. Actually, the crew would be good to be friends with because it would reveal a lot of the map to me, but minus 10 already. Yeah, people are not being very friendly this game. And that's fine. I don't mind that. It's just like, ugh. One of those games where diplomacy was never really an option for me. So this is where it begins to get interesting. First profit taken. Good. I'm going to make Constantinople my holy city. That looks good to me. Horseback riding is going to be very important for me to get as quickly as I can. I'm just trying to think. Is, is archer spam the best thing to do right now? Or do I do a couple of warriors? Uh, so I've got a couple. Of I'll do one warrior. So I've got a melee unit just around. But this is good. Um, I just need to move my archers to a slightly more defensible location now, and then we can go from there. Now, Yerevan has quite a few warriors. That's good for me. That's really, really good for me. There's the religion. It's turn 40. Oh, Germany. Yeah, you're going to love this. You are going to absolutely love this, Germany. We'll pick the danger noodle. And what should we have for my religion? Feed the world is an option, ladies and gentlemen. It is an option. I am almost tempted to say that there's nothing else we can do because it would just, it's just my favorite. It's just my favorite. Although actually, to be fair, using faith, there is one option with Byzantium on this modded uh, playthrough, which might be good. Here we go. Prosperity Doctrine, Commercial Hub, Entertainment Complex and Warrotter Park buildings you can get with Faith. Now, Entertainment Complex, I will try this out. I'm not sure if there is a bit of a glitch here. The Hippodrome is not an Entertainment Complex. It is an upgraded version of. I'm pretty sure that the mod has this coded in so it works, but if it doesn't work, then I took the risk and what can you do? Crusade, there's Crusade. Oh, Crusade is the best. Plus 10 combat strength when fighting within the borders of foreign cities that follow the religion. Oh, what's that, Yerevan? You want to become part of my religion? We've declared war. The game starts on turn 40, ladies and gentlemen. Turn 40. And we are going to basically use my archers to cause chaos. I will destroy my enemies, and if you continue to help them, I'm destroying your enemies. Oh, Germany is just so lame sometimes. Right, now this archer is the most at risk, and this archer is the most at risk, because they can get attacked twice, but this one is stood on a woods, so it's probably safer than this one which is stood in the open. So I'm going to kill one of these archer warriors. I'm going to go one, like that, two, three, and then bam, did you see? Whoa, dirty, plus plus, look, I spread it to a city state already. And I've spread it to this city. So already we have four cities following my religion. Four glorious cities. Now how are they going to respond? They're going to charge at my... Uh, yep, yeah, they are. Look at that. The archer did get hit. A That's strong. fine. That's fine. We don't mind that. We don't mind taking a little bit of damage here and there. There's that attack. 
And bam, Yerevan now follows my religion and I get the era score for doing that at war, which gives me the golden age that I was after. Good, good on me. That's what I say. Now, we just need to again protect this archer if we can. So we're going to go for one attack, two attacks, that gets the kill, good. And then we'll go for three attacks, four attacks like that. I think if I now move my scout, I really want my scouts to be within range of Yerevan's borders so that I get the defensive strength, but we'll see about that. And here is a confusing play. I'm not going to go for Pingala. I'm going to go for a Magnus start in the capital. And the reason for that is this. Black Marketeer strategic resource costs for units are discounted by 80%. It's so good. It's so, so good. Um, oh, yeah, that just basically it means I can produce horsemen like infinitely. So as you see, I've got the plus three combat strength from having Taxis at the moment. It's a beautiful addition to my empire. Well, bam, again, we're just we're spreading the religion around a lot at the moment, but I don't really need to spread it around anymore. People follow it. Everyone's happy that they follow it. It's all good. Basically, Yerevan's entire army cleared already which is quite good. Not the entirety of the army, but most of it. Just gonna get you forward with the volley. There's a lot of people with promotions now, but we're just gonna cross the river and stand in their land as much as we can. As long as we're in their territory, we have the crusade bonus, and that gives us a lot of combat strength. Hey, Okay, that's a golden age to start with. What a game. What a game. Agogi's still good. Whilst I've got positive gold, we'll hold on that one. Exodus of the Evangelist would be fantastic if I needed to spread my religion, but I don't because I am Byzantium. Using my faith to produce more settlers would be pretty cool. Extra culture, though. I think that getting extra culture is a really good thing. And the reason that I want extra culture is because I want a beeline towards monarchy. If I can get divine right and I can get my tagmas out, then that's really, really good. And getting a better boost for temples, I mean, that would be amazing. So it feels a bit weird, but we're going to do that. Now, monumentality is a really good thing to use it on, but I have a religion that lets me use my faith. So I'm going to get Penbrush and Voice instead. I, I appreciate it is a bit of a weird choice, but it's a choice that in my head makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna beeline military tradition as well because I want maneuver. I very much want maneuver. Just selling some horses early game to give myself a little bit of a bankroll, but I wanna hold on to as many of these as I can really. Getting four in per turn, it's fine. Only 22 damage my archer took then for being within Yerevan, uh, getting attacked by their, their ranged attack. So that's pretty, pretty decent. We don't mind that at all. And now you can see, look at this, crusade archer strikes on <laughs> ancient wars. I mean. It really, really wasn't going to last very long, Yerevan. This is this is fine. Yeah, 21 strength attacks. I mean, it's they're not it's not game changing. It's very, very powerful. You can see it's turn 46, and already AI is now scooting above 40 science. Like deity plus plus means that the AI is going to be incredibly powerful, and we're going to have to be a little bit careful that we don't get dwarfed here. Because as powerful as Byzantium is, the AI has a lot of bonuses this game. An awful lot of bonuses. I believe that's Yerevan. Indonesia might cause a military emergency against me for doing that. But honestly, fighting them? Not a bad thing. Also, they're getting a religion, which is awesome. So Buddhism's gone. The Kree have a religion. So if I can kill the Kree at some point, that gives me more taxes. Don't forget, for every religion I take over, that's another plus three that my army gets. It's awesome. Oh, and I think I just took over Kabul accidentally. Oh, I must have done something for them. Nice. I, I'm getting double experience the battles I initiate, which is basically all my battles because I am bloodthirsty. Oh, no. Canada. Oh, dear. Canada's not going to like the fact that I just killed Yerevan. Ignore that, Canada. Ignore it. I think, actually, Indonesia's going to get their religion in two turns. Do I hold off and just go for this city-state first? Do they have any city-state friends? Yes. Okay, this city-state will attack me if I go to war with Indonesia. So I think it's actually worth me taking it out first. So I'm going to leave a sort of token army to the north. And we're going to take everything else further south. And we're going to start taking on this city-state if we can. Um, yeah, declare war. Sorry, my friends. Sorry. I don't really... I'm not actually that sorry. I'll be honest. Oh, it's like a bloodbath here. Kabul is fighting my... Yeah, the two city-states, oh, they're going mad at each other. It's great, and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, this is... Okay, this should be pretty, pretty swift, being honest. This should be absolutely swift. Let's get Ranger on you. Um, and then perfect. Yeah, look at this. My army is now scything through. Horseback riding, though, has been finished. Okay, 
that is really useful. Now, what I'm going to do is beeline some just some useful text. Pottery, irrigation, writing, bronze working, and sailing. Those are going to be all very useful for me to just go through quickly. But now, horseman time. Build me some horsemen, please. Thank you. I'll get the policy card to speed that up in a second. Oh, they levied all the units. They I levied all the units. What a stupid thing to do. Oh, thank you, Indonesia. Basically, what they've done is guaranteed that I'm going to just keep those. I'm building up faith, actually, because if I can get a great general that produces my war weariness by 25%, that's going to be glorious. Like, uh, oh, just, just beautiful. Three turn horsemen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And Government Plaza. Do you mind just... Oh, I don't have irrigation yet. I don't have irrigation yet. Fine. Finish that warrior. But then I really need irrigation quickly. Kemmons. Hello. How are you? You are doing good. Are you the one with the religion? Buddhism? Yes, I, I thought as much. Clear. thought as much. And Indonesia has Hinduism already. Okay. Good for you. Good for you. Unfortunately, it's not going to last very long, but good for you. My first horseman is complete. Amazing stuff. Right, they're so quick. They're so maneuverable. I've got four horses coming in per turn. Yes, I can actually crank them out almost as fast as I can produce horses. So this is good, but this is going to ignore the walls of the city-state when it attacks with 36 strength. Plus 10 for Crusade, plus 3 for Thousands taxes. It should attack with about 49 strength, if I'm lucky. If I've calculated this right, and I'm lucky. Normally, I've calculated it right. Magnus, now get, uh, as I say, provision into Black Marketeer. It's, it's a really alternatively weird route, but it works very well. Irrigation's done now. Government Plaza. Yeah, just thank you. Get that sorted for me. Oh yeah, the horseman just destroys the walls basically in one go. Perfect. Well, that's that's great. That's just that's just lovely. And Kasploosh next turn will have that done. Just moving now my army to the northern border with Indonesia, where we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Most of these units belong to the city state, so once I kill the city state, we should be laughing. But there's enough. There's enough here that I'm gonna have to kill myself. There it is. It's gone. It's taken out, and Indonesia has just lost about a third of their army. Oh no, what a shame for everyone that isn't me. Sorry, Indonesia. It's surprise wartime. We, um, yeah. We were never going to be super friends, were we? Being honest, they have so much army on my border. Uh, I just want to just, as I say, spread my religion to them. That's where Hinduism lives. Kabul has a huge army, so I'm hoping that Kabul are just going to charge into Indonesia, sow a bit of chaos, and then we'll see what kind of like comes out of Indonesia to attack me back. Yes, I've got plenty of archers, so I'll be fine. Just sort of wait for them to come to me. Yes, I know. I know people are going to denounce me, but honestly, it was going to happen at some stage in this game because I'm not a very nice person. I'm like bad Rome. I'm like the evil side of Rome. Oh, look, the heavy chariot. Ooh, you think a heavy chariot's gonna save you, do you, friends? It's not gonna save you, especially with Kabul just charging around and dealing this much damage. Oh boy, there's one attack. Bam. The deity get stuffed. Indeed you should. Indeed you should. Look at this, it's now spreading so well. It's spreading so well. Go on, spread, 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 spread. Yes, era score. Ha ha ha! Getting rid of Hinduism with the flames of war. And seven experience for attacking a city pointlessly. Oh, we like that a lot. We like that a lot. I've got an extra bunch of army now coming from the southern flank. I've got my horsemen, which are just going to run ragged through the enemy. In fact, actually, I've almost got depredation in some of these. It's going to be insane when they hit the front lines. Yes, that's right. You spread Buddhism around, my friend. You spread it around. Taoism. Five religions already down. Five religions already down. Nobody seems to be otherwise going for them. But if Germany and Canada pick one up as well. Oh boy. That's going to be a lot of fun. Now, I'm hoping I don't lose too many archers just pointlessly in this little fight. I have been throwing army around because I know I can get away with it. But they do have 411 military strength. So I need to be just a little bit careful. Just a little bit careful. I say that. I'm just charging my horsemen in now because I can almost kill. I can almost kill the slingers in one hit. Ah, Taban has just gone as well. Beautiful. So yeah, we're really not being as careful as we should be, but never mind. Never mind. Oh my god, so many horses. So many horses. Have I got Black Marketeer? There we go. 80% discount on horses. So each one only costs me four now. So I can basically just spam them like crazy. I want to get an encampment or two down as well. Because I really, really fancy getting um, not just the um, great, uh, sorry, great generals, but I also 
quite fun some Niang units. I don't use them too often and I think this might be the game to have a bit of fun with them. Okay, still spreading the religion nicely, just slowly but surely attacking the units and my horses can now almost run into the territory. Oh man, I was just really hoping I'd be able to jump in there. Um, not quite though, not quite. They can't cross the river this turn, but oh yeah, they're strong. They are strong. Okay, they're attacking me on all directions. My horses, oh, they survived that. They did survive that. Wow, that's impressive. I kind of just threw them in there. I really probably shouldn't have thrown them in as much. Oligarchy gives me the military policy slots I probably need, as well as improving my archers. No, no, sorry, my, my land units, my anti-cavalry, my naval cavalry. But it also gives me 20 extra unit experience. It's either that or Classical Republic, which I kind of probably want for the amenity and the housing. But I think momentum is going to be what gives me the day. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Classical Republic in order to get the legacy card so that I can get the extra stuff. There's Strategos, that would help a lot. Urban planning. Oh no, maneuver I need. Right, so hang on, we'll go for a maneuver for now and then I'll keep an eye on that one. But we'll switch over as soon as I have finished the Warlord's Throne. Once I've done the Warlord's Throne, we'll do that and we'll switch over to oligarchy killing units is so much fun and now we've got crusade attacks as well oh yeah that helps i think i might have actually managed to go around and surround them a little bit i'm on 750 faith is what i need actually i'm gonna pillage some holy sites here because it really does give me quite the bonus i want to get that great general quick now that city will go next turn i don't think the warrior will finish it no that's good though so far so good you can see yambi now has its war walls up which is a little bit of a problem but luckily for me Byzantium melts walls with horses so I just need to get my horses back to the front line again. A drone full of hippos you say? Whew. Well then I have heard of a horse drone, but not a hippo drone. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I'm around all week please please laugh at my jokes. I, no, nobody I need I need the laughter I need to be able to convince myself that I'm funny, otherwise I can't sleep at night. Just making sure all the units that need the health are going to be the ones that get it. Um, in fact, actually this horse again, I'd rather just pillage that faith tile and fix it later, get the marble fixed and not do that. Let's just do this quickly and bam, a city's now mine. I spread the religion around a little bit more. Sometimes, I'm pretty sure you do get a religion burst when you attack something within a city. You might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure you do get it. And bam, again, look, we're just slowly pressurizing now. We haven't been in range of their capital yet, but that is not far off, surely. That is not far off now. This trade route is just to my capital quickly, purely so that I can actually build a bridge over this river, which is being desperately annoying for me. Okay, so Yambi is now pretty much surrounded, which is good. I'm able to just continually improve my units and oh look, the wall's down already. Yeah, it didn't take long. Cool. Well, um, okay then. Oh, they just threw a unit at me. That's handy. That's really handy. And they've left a galley here as well. Oh, thanks for that. Bam. Oh, it's halfway there. Halfway already to converting their city. Oh, they're making this so easy for me. In a good way, in a fun way, in a Ryan... Ursa Ryan approves of this sort of way. Uh, they're on 182 military strength still though, so they do have combat strength. I'm not entirely sure where that combat strength is, but supposedly it does exist. Oh, Spear of Floon. Oh, does that hit all of my units? Land combat units that enter adjacent fox get plus five. Oh, yes. Okay, now that would explain why Indonesia have been a little bit harder to kill than I expected them to be. That would explain a lot. They've had the spear this entire time. It's funny how I didn't really notice it. Like, I expected something was up, but even then I was like, I mean, maybe something's up. <laughs> my units are so strong anyway. Look, there's a barb camp that just appeared below Constantinople. It's like, don't do that. I have so many units now. It's crazy. Don't don't pick a fight with me, Barbs. Just don't. Don't do it. Look at all that experience for my units. That's all great. And then the horses. Can you can you just like attack? Hang on. Get you round like so. Let's just do that attack. Perfect. Mathematics boost, did you say? Oh, there's a warrior. Okay, units still exist. Let's just pillage things until we can tempt them out. Let's do that. 
Oh, that's Wulin, by the way. Uh, great general points when a land unit defeats a major civilization. Oh my goodness, I would love great general points. Yes, yes, I would. A hundred times yes. Oh, let's do this. Hang on. Bam. Okay, next next envoy and I'll have that. Oh, that would be so good. One more 32 take for me. Bam. Okay, again, normally I swear it used to give you a religion boost when you kill the unit inside the city. Yeah, it does. No, it absolutely does. It just doesn't update itself. Fine. I was going to say, like, come on now. Come on now. Yeah, that's, 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 that's something I should have. Um, Hippodrome. Okay, now, the thing about Hippodromes, right, is that sometimes it's not worth rushing them. Sometimes you want to wait until you've got Tagmas. And I think that's what I'm going to do, because I don't really want to be rushing heavy chariots out. So I know I've got the Hippodromes, but I'm not going to be necessarily using them super quickly here. Oh, what went war with me? The bull has declared war on Lahore. Oh, oh, Lahore has now declared on me. Okay, which is down there. Okay, that's not okay. That's not very interesting. Fine. I was like, oh, I might have some more units that I can kill here, but no. Oh, actually, there is a galley there, though. That's a unit that I can kill, and I can sort of stand in the land now and give myself the extra ability. I want all my units to get the Spear of Floon as soon as they can. It's such a good move. Look at this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Leave your spearmen right out in the open for me. Has the capital taken? And that means my Taxus is now a beautiful plus six. Oh, it's gorgeous to look at. It's just, it's just a sexy thing. We love it. One attack, two attack. Beautiful. Can I just say I am loving the fact that I can shoot galleys with archers. That is very effective and very good fun. Turban is taken. Good stuff. And I've got another Horseman three. The city flipped yet? No, it hasn't. Weirdly enough, they're, they're sort of city up to the north is providing more resistance than any of their other cities down south. Now Sun Tzu, oh I can probably get him if there's enough pillaging to be had. There is enough pillaging to be had. Bam! He's mine. Okay good, now I can start saving my faith for more useful things. Don't mind me if I just borrow your defenses. Oh yeah look at the wall, it's almost entirely gone in two hits. That's a defended capital that. That's um, yeah it doesn't go well for you. Oh, look, a second settler. Oh my goodness, it's just like Indonesia just providing as many settlers as I could ever need. Does killing this galley solve that problem for me? Oh, it almost does. It almost does. Okay, cool, 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 cool. If I just continue to do all that pillaging and move the warrior in there, bam. Does that spread it to that city? Oh, it's so close. It is so close. I just need this galley kill. If I can get that galley kill, we should be fine. Oh, they want peace. They want peace, but they have just charged all their galleys right in there. So that works well for me because I think, I think they've left themselves open here. How? Hang on. Right, we'll go one attack, two attack, three attack like that. And there we go. Converted. That's going to make this a lot easier because now I can just melt the walls with my horsey faces. I think I can get Woolen on side. Great general points every time I defeat an enemy land unit. That'll help. That'll help a lot. Oh, some, sometimes. Sometimes games just go nicely for you and it's, uh, it's difficult to put a finger on why, but once they start heading in that direction, you start to sort of relax a bit and go, ah, lovely. Yeah, I think the military city-states, those are the ones I'm going to absolutely sort of keep on side. But there's a risk here that they will take the city, so I'm just going to move my warrior out of there quickly. But yeah, actually no, I might just be able to kill them and yeah, there we go, Indonesia's out. No worries at all. A five era score, another golden edge. Nothing but gold for this bear. Next target. I think it's got to be Germany, right? Did Germany build a religion? Is that something they did? Let's have a quick look. I don't remember. No. No, no religion for Germany, but maybe one day. Maybe one day. Yeah, so Kabul I want to keep on side. Double experience for all my units is great. Woolen I want to keep on side as well. Uh, Lahore I did want to play with. Yeah, I feel like they're going to be good fun. I, I very rarely use Lahore properly, so that could be fun. So we'll try and get that on side, but Berlin... Heidelberg. We've got two turns and then we should be able to flip our government because the Warlord's throne will be finished. Annoyingly, it only just finished after all that war. But we'll flip our government to oligarchy. That'll give me a couple more military policy slots. And I'm going to start pumping some boats out. Get a couple of galleys to boost towards Dromons. But Dromons, are, I mean, actually this bay where Germany is, that would work really well. Oh, I built a campus. I've forgotten I did that. Every now and then I build decent infrastructure doesn't last often, but when it does happen, we all go, huh, Ursa, sometimes Ursa can play. 
Sometimes. Not not all the time, but sometimes. There we go. Warlord's Throne, done. Change to Oligarchy. Perfect. Maneuver, good. Maritime Industries, even better. Republican Legacy, in it goes. Urban Planning, perfect. That is a good little assortment of war-based policies, because I am... I'm not in a friendly mood this game. Put it that way. We are we are just stretching stretching our war mongering legs. Just making sure all my units have the spear of flu. And I actually managed to avoid a couple of them getting it, which is a bit annoying. So I just need to make sure we do that. That's a nice swordsman upgrade actually. We'll keep that one in town. Quickly dip into our money. I think I'm gonna stick her in Lahore. That's a wonderful city-state to take over, and then that'll be all three military city-states on my side. Massively, massively helping. Worryingly, I just settled my 11th city. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleventh. And I didn't get a sprawling empire, which means one of the AIs is doing very well on this map. I'd say worryingly. It's actually good fun. I'm looking forward to there being some huge crunch match. The thing is, like, it's turn 79 and I've got 11 cities. But the Kree are on 124 I'm science per turn. There's a real risk we're going to be so far behind that my Byzantium surge is going to just run out of steam. Got to keep an eye on this one. 11 techs behind the Kree. I tell you. Deity plus plus, it is not to be sniffed at. There's the sprawling empire. Okay, so somebody has nine cities. Nine. Oh, ship building. Droman time. It is Droman time. 45 strength on Germany cities there. They don't have a religion, so I should be able to get my religion in there pretty quick. But yeah, three turn Dromans. It's gonna it's gonna take a while for us to get enough to be a world beating power. But I think we can do it. One of the best bits about this early war is the fact that the pyramids are here now. That means that all of my builders have one extra charge. It is a huge benefit to me. Now, whilst Amani is settling herself in there, my Magnus is doing good, but I don't think I need to promote him any further. I think it might be a good Pingala move. Now, what's my second best city? I think it actually might be this one. So we'll we'll stick it down there, see what he can do. I think, I think this is good. Trade-wise, look, Canada is basically bankrolling me. Which is ironic, considering they're supposed to be quite, like, peace-loving, but maybe Canada just wants to see the world burn in their state of neutrality. They're like, they're like evil Switzerland. They're just sort of sitting there going, hmm, yes, we're not going to get involved, but if I can pay for everybody else to fight, then I'm going to have a whale of a time. Now, the question is going to be, where are Germany's forces, and where can I kill them? Because at the moment, yeah, 45 strength cities is too much for me without Crusade. But I'm hoping they will have units around. Now, what is their tech like? 17 techs versus my 15. They should be of a comparable tech. Although I should expect crossbows because the AI is very good at getting crossbows out. That's a random warrior. Hello, random warrior. Might have to make myself relatively frequented with that thing. Uh, sorry, Germany. I'm just passing by. I'm basically going to go and see if anybody wants a joint war with you. Probably only going to be Canada that could have a joint war. Oh yeah, they're up for it. Canada, they're such warmongers. Look at them, I love it. I love it. Good on you, Canada. Right, I'll uh, give it open borders and yeah, we're going to be just best of friends. Absolutely best of friends. They only like me. Minus 13. That is worryingly... <laughs> they like me a lot. Considering how much chaos I brought into the world. I like that. Now, Lahore has just moved to my side, which is good. They have one, two, three, four swordsmen on the borders. So I might actually just quickly borrow those. 360 gold. Frederick only has one envoy there. So yeah, I'm going to levy them. Thank you so much. Get me a bit more era score for doing that. I don't really need era score. That is like the last thing I actually need. But with this little warrior kill, with my horses, hopefully that'll spread. Oh yeah. A lot of religion very quickly. Okay, perfect. So the first two German cities now have my religion. So even if they get walls up, which there is always a risk that they were going to, it's not going to make a difference. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Matthew Wilkinson, Salty Tech, Davalak, Doughboy91, Skeptical Bear, Paul Coffey, Kroger Brown Trailmix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, and Nim. Thank you all for your support and everybody for the interaction on the videos. It is helping me to slay the algorithm monster and to do this full time. Thank you all. See you next time.